Welcome back to educator.com. Today we're going to get into some more advanced integration techniques, uh, in particular in integration by parts. So before we had uh, different integration rules and principles and properties that we follow, but sometimes the integral will be uh, too difficult or won't uh, obey to any rules that we've already looked at. So we have a new technique that we're going to talk about. It's called integration by parts, and here is its formula. So if we divide this first section of the integral, we have a u term and also a dv term. So the principle of this rule is to choose your u term and your dv term uh, so that your equation can be easily transformed into this and then we can integrate the v part with respect to u uh, and dramatically simplify our expression. So let's take a look at how this rule uh, is derived. So it came from the product rule. So if you remember the product rule, we take the derivative of uv with respect to x, we get du dx times v, so derivative of the first term times the second, plus derivative of the second term, dv dx times the first term, which is u, du. So that's the basic product rule uh, formula. So let's simplify this a little bit. Well, we see how we have a dx term in every, uh, in every term, so let's drop that. So now we have uh, this expression that we can integrate. So if we integrate this expression, we have this. So we haven't really done much yet. Well, now if we look, we can actually uh, drop this because we're taking the integral of a derivative term. So it's simply uv equals, uh, and this term, we just rewrite it a little bit to v times du plus u times dv. So we have these three terms now, and if we rearrange this, uh, we will have something like the, the integral of u dv equals so all we're doing is keeping this on this uh, on this side and taking uv and subtracting this term. So as you can see, we are left after arranging the product rule a little bit with a integration by parts formula. So next we're going to look at some of the rules that we should follow when we choose our u value and our dv value to make our integral as easy and simple as possible. So the first rule that should be followed when we're choosing u and dv is that dv should be able uh, to be clearly integrated. So we're starting off with the u into integration of u with respect to dv and if we get another integral out of that it should be easier, otherwise we're not really uh, making any progress. And sometimes we may need to do it a couple of times uh, to carry out the integration of parts formula, but uh, most of the time it is better to just make this an easier uh, integral. And, <clears throat> and also, uh, for the sake of uh, dv, well, dv should be able to uh, integrate it, to be integrated to this v term. Uh, otherwise, we have to deal with an entire other integral. So recap of the rules, uh, dv can be integrated, and integral v du is just as difficult as the original integral, at most just as difficult. So following these two rules, let's take a look at some examples. So this section, it could get a little bit confusing, so I've left the uh, formula for integration by parts here at the top right. So in the next few slides, look for this uh, to remind yourself of the formula. So let's go ahead and get started with this example. Uh, integral of x sine of x dx. Well, if we take uh, our u here to be x and our dv here as 
sine of x dx, we'll see that dv is uh, easily integrated uh, because it only has one x term. And we will see if this is more difficult or less difficult uh, to solve for than the original integral. So we have our u equals x dv equals sine of x dx, which makes our du dx and our v equals to the integral of sine of x dx, which is simply negative cosine of x. So then now we apply our formula and we have u, which is x times v, which is negative cosine of x equals, excuse me, subtract integral of v, which is negative cosine x du, and du here is our dx. So this is our new expression, and we see that this term, this, d, this v du term is in easily uh, integrated. So we just go ahead and carry out the rest of the integration, plus sine of x. So at the end, we have this expression. And we have to note that without integration by parts, there is no way we can uh, solve this integral because none of the rules um, allow us to perhaps cancel this x. So pretend we used a chain rule and we substitute a sine of x or x to be u, uh, and du wouldn't be able to cancel out the other x term. So therefore, uh, sometimes integration by parts is the only method that we have we can use. Moving on to the next example, we have integral of ln of x. So here we have seemingly only one term, ln of x. But don't forget that we can set dx, and we often do as a variable in itself. So let's go ahead and use uh, u to be ln of x. Let's use a different color here. u equals ln of x, and dv let's say, equals dx. So that means v right away equals x. And du equals 1 over x dx. So now let's apply our uh, rules. So u is ln of x, v is x, minus integral of v times du. And du is 1 over x dx. So we just substitute that, uh, that expression into here. So then we simplify this down a little bit. x times ln of x minus, well, x times 1 over x is just 1. So we are taking the integral of 1, which is simply x. So this is our final expression. So far, our two examples have been pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, for the next example, let's look at something that might be a little bit tricky, but if we just be patient, we can easily solve it regardless. So here we have uh, e to the x times cosine of x term. Well, right away, let's go ahead and say our u uh, is equal to e, to e to the x, and our dv equals cosine of x dx. So that means our du equals e to the x dx, and our v equals to sine of x. So it seems pretty straightforward so far. Let's see what happens when we plug that into the formula. So we have u e to the x times sine of x. So that part is taken care of. Well, we have minus uh, integral of v sine of x times du. And du in this case is e to the x dx. So right away we are seeing trouble. Sine of x times e to the x. Well, that looks kind of like the original term with a different sinusoid. So once again, uh, we are not making this easier on ourselves. However, if we notice that if we take this and apply the same integration by parts substitution, we'll get another integral that looks exactly like our original expression. Uh, so then we can eventually move this expression to the 
other side of the equation and combine with our original integral of u dv. So uh, let's go ahead and just carry that out and see what's going to happen. All right, so now we need to apply another integration by parts. So let's say u equals to ex and dv equals the sine of x. And this means that du is equal to ex dx and v equals negative cosine of x. So let's go ahead and apply this, this rule. So we have integral of e to the x sine of x equals u e to the x times v negative cosine of x minus integral of v negative cosine of x times du. And du here is e to the x. So let's rewrite this a little bit for our uh, simplicity's sake. Get rid of some of the minus signs. Negative e to the x cosine of x plus the integral of cosine of x e, the integral of e to the x cosine of x. Pardon me, there should be a e, d, dx there. So right here we notice that this, this expression is the same as the expression that we started with. So what that means is we can substitute this whole term into this term and we'll have these two terms combined. So let's go ahead and write that out. So the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx, taken straight from the problem, equals, here's the first integration by parts, e to the x sine of x minus well, here's our second integration by part, this whole expression, uh, minus negative e to the x cosine of x plus the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx. So if we distribute that negative sign, that minus sign, minus, so we can take this expression and apply it over here. So let's go ahead and just add those two together. So it becomes two times integral of e to the x cosine of x dx equals e to the x sine of x plus e to the x cosine x, which we can uh, simplify by just pulling out the e to the x term. So we get cosine of x plus sine of x. Well, we still have this two left, but to get what the original integral uh, equates to, we just simply divide by 2 on both sides, so we're left with e to the x cosine of x dx integral equals 1 half e to the x cosine x plus sine of x. And this is our final solution. So in this problem we've learned that patience is the key and sometimes we have to apply the integration by parts rule twice to get the answer. Uh, so to know whether you should take the integral twice or just once, um, well, if we notice a cosine or some type of sine or cosine, we know that no matter how much we take the integral, it's always either going to be cosine or sine. So when we see cosine or sine, uh, there is a big hint to maybe uh, doing integration by parts twice. So moving on, taking a look at our next example, uh, we're looking at the integral of x times e to the x. So remember our rules, we're trying to s find a u and a dv such that integral v du is no more difficult than the original integral and that dv is in easily uh, integrated. So if we choose u to be x and dv to be e to the x, well then we know that dv is in easily integrated, so we have v equals e to the x, and du equals dx. So let's apply this directly into our integration by parts formula that we derive from the product rule. Um, <clears throat> so we have the integral of x e to the x dx equals u, which equals x, times v, which equals e to the x minus integral of v e to the x times du, which is dx. 
and we see that this is very easily integrated. So x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. And we can either leave it at this, or we can extract the e to the x term, x minus 1 plus c. So when we're dealing with e to the x terms, just regular e to the x, no, uh, no complicated expression in the exponent, then um, integration by parts is not bad. And we can't carry this integration out unless we are using this method. For our last example of this section, uh, we are just going to follow the same rules that we've been following for the past uh, few examples. Uh, so this time, if we make u uh, x squared and dv ln of x, uh, let's see what happens. So u equals x squared, dv equals ln of x dx. Well, now we have to take uh, the integral of ln of x. Well, the integral of x squared may be easier to carry out than ln of x. So let's go ahead and switch those around and use u to be ln of x and dv to be x squared dx. Well, if we choose dv equals x squared dx, then we know that v equals 1 third x cubed just by power rule. And we know that du equals 1 over x dx. And now we can apply uh, these terms into our integration by parts formula. And we get something like the integral of x squared ln of x equals u times v. So v is 1 third x cubed times v times u, excuse me, ln of x minus the integral of v, 1 third x cubed times du, which is 1 over x dx. So no problem here. We just cancel out the x's appropriately and use the power rule. So we have 1 third x cubed ln of x minus 1 third integral of x cubed over x is just x squared. So we have that x squared term now. We just apply the power rule to get the integral. 1 third times 1 third x cubed plus c. So now if we simplify a little bit, uh, pull out the 1 third x squared ln of x minus 1 third x cubed. And all that has a constant. And we can also pull out uh, an x squared term, 1 third x squared ln of x minus a third x. We seem to be have made a writing error here. It should be x cubed ln of x. So if you take out the x cubed, then we just have an ln of x minus one third term. And this is our final answer. So sim simply by following the rule of choosing u and dv, uh, we changed our original setup to something that is much easier uh, to solve for using integration by parts. So we, instead of using u equals x squared, we recognize that the integral of x squared is very simple to solve for. So we use that for dv. And we notice that ln of x uh, is easy to take the, in, uh, the derivative of. So we use that for u. So uh, always be on your toes and use these rules to the best of your advantage. So thanks for watching educator.com, integration by parts. We will see you in the next lesson.